Well, that's the Vice President Mike Pence blasting Democrats for playing politics with our nation's military as the federal government goes into day three of a shutdown mode. And, of course, he's doing that overseas. It's embarrassing. Pence also reassuring our brave men and women overseas that the Trump administration is on their side. So what does his message mean for our military? Here to weigh in. Let's meet our panel. Former NYPD Lieutenant Army veteran uh, Dr. Darren Porchers here. Army Armed Forces veteran serving 10 years in the reserves, Kathy Barnett is here. Retired Marine Corps Captain and Vice President of Operations at Selfmade, Katie Horgan. And retired Army Captain Connor Crehan is here. Connor, let's start with you. First off, this shutdown is meaning that you, the men and women have to continue to serve. Mm -hmm. Their pay is delayed. What's that like? That's pretty disheartening when you think about it because... No matter what, the bad guys aren't going to stop coming, and you still have to get up every morning and go do your job. So when you think about the government not being able to get themselves in order in order to get yourself paid, it's very disheartening. There are also cancellation, Katie, uh, cancel canceling and delaying training for reserve units. Does that matter? Yes, that absolutely matters. And I think Vice President Pence in his speech made it very clear that the architects of this shutdown have shown a callous disregard for the U.S. military, active in reserves, and impacts our military readiness. And the underlying issue here for me is the use of a shutdown as a negotiating tool. It's not a negotiating tool. We pay lawmakers to come to a compromise to act in the best interests of American people. And that's not happening. And that, to me, signals that we have a problem with our system. It's a broken system, right. that there's a lack of accountability and a misalignment of incentives. How is it possible that this can happen without consequence? You know, remember last time. Um, Kathy, that John Boehner came out and he basically was held hostage by Ted Cruz and company saying uh, cancel Obamacare. Well, President Obama's never going to cancel Obamacare. Course, the government yeah. shot down. It had nothing to do with the budget. This, again, is something that has nothing to do with the budget. It has nothing to do with the budget. There's no imminent reason for immigration to even be a part of the, uh, a, a part of the funding in, in, in this round. So this is squarely a Schumer shutdown. Democrats own this one right here. But we have men and women who are out there putting their lives on the line. We have families who are being told to trust their governments, to do what is right, to bring their loved ones back home to them. And right. what are we seeing? Democrats politicking for electoral votes. I think it's very important for Americans to realize that when we have Democrats trying to resist the president or when we have the media trying to shame the president or make it harder for the president, what they're really doing is resisting us, the American people. Who they're really making it harder for is us, the American people, specifically the military. According to VA records, uh, veterans' uh, poverty rate is on the increase. The number of veterans who are on food stamps is far outpacing those who are not a part of the military. So I think the least we can do is make sure that they're getting paid, yeah. make sure that we're taking care of their needs over the needs of people who aren't even citizens. It would be good if they served serve the military, and the budget did. You know, In fact, Chuck Schumer said we gave the president more money for the military than he even requested, mm -hmm. but right now we can't get to it, Darren. I think it's a real problem. One of the things that people are not taking into consideration, the average private in the military, in the Army, makes a, doesn't make a lot of money. And these people live in the barracks, and they have to support themselves, so they're really in a tough position. And then when we look at the exponential threats that are facing this nation from places like China, Russia, and North Korea, it's incumbent upon Congress to right. elicit these funds for us as a military. So when we move forward, we have to look towards someone like Chuck Schumer, and he's guilty in the court of normal uh, of in formal term excuse me uh, the, he's guilty in the court of formal turpitude because this issue is impacting not just on the military right. but us on the nation as a whole that's true connor but a lot of people say hey the president always said you know if you put me in charge i'll make sure this happens i'll put everyone in the room so far if you believe the new york times they told him we'll handle this mr president you know don't get involved right now what's your reaction to people say the president should get more directly involved I think it's important to have leadership at the top that supports everyone underneath him and in his command. And as the commander in chief, it's his duty to get involved. So I fully support. You want him in there. Absolutely. And I fully support what Vice President Pence said about himself and the president supporting the military. And I think it's important to remember that they do, in fact, care about the military and our veterans, and they need to get more involved. Katie, it's unbelievable the lawmakers who have the shutdown still get paid. 
Yeah, that is just unconscionable to me. If, if they're not doing their jobs, which is what's happening, I mean, this budget process is about anything but the budget at this point. It's become uh, a vehicle for partisan squabbles. So if they're not able to get their job done, then right. they shouldn't be paid. And Kathy, here's yeah. what bothers me. We're trying to invest in missile defense. We're trying to find out where our aircraft carriers are going to go and how many we should build. You can't do that month to month. We're dealing with a month to month budget instead of a two year and budget. It is you insane. can't plan. We all know that it takes 60 votes in order to pass legislation in the Senate. So once again, the narrative is that it's, you know, it's Donald Trump's fault. But what else can he do? Everything that Democrats wanted, whether it's with, whether it's with the chip or, 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 or any of the other measures, they are in this particular funding. There is nothing that they oppose um, about it. But like General Mattis said, China and Russia are now, are, has now replaced terrorism as the number one threat uh, to our national security. So to your point, we can't go month to month trying to figure out a strategy against China and Russia. All right, and, and Darren, how does this uh, play out in the long run? North Korea has launched two different missiles over Japan. Japan is now conducting we weapons drills for, excuse me, um, drills for their citizens in Tokyo. We don't have the logistics to support this. And when we look at these, um, this shutdown, for example, it's, it's of detriment that we get these funds to um, ensure that we have the logistics in place to protect these yeah. citizens abroad. And after we saw what happened in Hawaii, it doesn't look like uh, many states are prepared for an emergency event no. after the no. cataclysmic event. Imagine? 38 minutes. That was real. Unbelievable. Thanks so much for your service, and hopefully we'll be talking about what you're going to be doing with the two-year budget soon uh, in the military. <laughs> Thanks so much.